Beholders are one of the most recognizable and beloved monsters in all of Dungeons & Dragons. Today, Ed Greenwood, original creator of the Forgotten Realms, or as you may know it, the world of D&D, is here to tell us all about five most dangerous beholders you can use in your next game. <laughs> Number five, Volorant. This eye tyrant isn't a ghost or any other sort of undead, but it got its name because when seen by others, it almost always has an improved wraith form cast on itself so it's translucent, ghostly, and when necessary, amorphous. Volorant is a beholder mage that's mastered more arcane magic than some archmages. It has developed its own variants of many familiar spells, such as, for instance, anti-magic blades. Many of these variants no longer require somatic components, and as material components, use creatures devoured by Volorant in one gulp. Unlike Zerparagar, that lingers in attics and disused mansions, Volorant travels afar, visiting dungeons and ruins, lurking patiently to watch when it finds adventures and the layers of monsters. It covets spell books, spell scrolls, and magic items it can experiment with or modify. Those of accomplished adventure wizards it prizes most highly. So it comes into far more contact with humans and other lesser beings than does Zerparagar, and to power its spells, often eats them. Number 4. Imrix. Imrix is an eye tyrant from the Troll Mountains that wanders about Alm and Tethir, and occasionally even ventures north to Scornubel, hunting humans to harvest memories and thoughts from, with a spell that invades minds as thoroughly as any illithid, but eats and damages nothing. Decades of such harvesting have made Imrix one of the most experienced eye tyrants ever, with, quote, remembered expertise in many things, from gem cutting and deep mining to shipbuilding and city plumbing and castle architecture. So, if Imrix borrows your memories, you don't lose them. It just reads them. You still have them, but now so does Imrix. Imrix has something else. Imrix has a strange affliction. It can't stop budding off little beholders from itself. It belches out a new spawn every two to three days. A human war helm sized or smaller beholder that darts here and there, driven by more by curiosity than aught else, and eager to try its eye stock powers, which very slightly from spawn to spawn. Imrix eats voraciously to fuel this constant spawning, and long ago developed spells that give it iron-strong mental control of its spawn, cast on them as they emerge into the world. So it uses them as spies, as lures, and fetch and carry agents, as well as a swirling cloud around itself to shield itself from hostile spells and missile attacks. It cares nothing for the fate of its spawn, considering them expendable fodder, but they soon realize this and make their escape if they can. At any time, Imrix may have as many as 20 spawn with it, more if in one of its cavern lairs located in desolate rocky areas of rural eastern Alm and Tethir. Imrix is slowly and patiently building its knowledge by stalking key humans to harvest memories from, both as a collector of lore for its own sake, and to eventually enact plans to enable it to rule city after city, likely beginning with Zezesper, and eventually rule most of the Sword Coast. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with a monster lover near you. If you want access to the top 10 instead of the top 5 most dangerous beholders, go to patreon.com slash edgreenwood and become a protector of the realms. To show your support another way, visit Ed's shop and get your hands on adventuring gear just like this. Plus one to charisma and link in the description. Number three, Maroxel. This reddish purple, green white eyed beholder is about the size of a large child's head and it has its lower jaw thrust forward more than its upper jaw. Yet among humans of the Shining Sea coast, where for decades it tarried, ere beginning to travel all over Faroon, 
it is feared and spoken of more than many other beholders for its preferred lifestyle. It catches humans it considers charismatic and important and influential among humans, and it burrows into their bodies from behind, cauterizing the edges of the hole it creates with its eye stalks and taking up residence in the human host body, healing its new home with the powers of another eye stalk and then controlling them from within. Now, its entry hole remains a gaping obvious wound, but it compels the human body to cover it with clothing. Barak's oak uses the human it's now resident within to carry it where it wants to go and participate in the acts it wants to, which often involve corrupting with bribery, blackmail and fear an ever larger network of contacts. This beholder is responsible for some of Zastam's failures to conquer lands outside of Thay by taking control of veteran Saiyan agents and manipulating all others who report to that individual to do what Mroxulk wants, not what will benefit Saz Tam. In recent years, tired of being affected by poisons used against host bodies or compelled to emerge from hosts thanks to magic, Mroxulk has used its controlled hosts to assemble and sponsor a small, nameless, hidden, somewhere near Prosker, cabal of wizards to develop spells to blunt, neutralize, or purge poisons, and to selectively reflect back spells cast at a protected host to their casters. A second backup cabal has recently been established in Selgaunt and is influencing and siphoning wealth from Sambia's rebuilding. Number 2. Fervorambril Several centuries ago, this beholder decided humans were the most adaptable, fastest rising in power race, and endlessly entertaining to boot, and decided to dwell in hiding in their midst. Near power, but not a ruler, and so not a target. It poses in human shape as a backroom chamberlain, Honster Raverland, affable and hardworking trusted as dedicated and competent and liked by those he serves and those who work under him. Varembril chose to serve and manipulate Mahilark Ophal of the Council of Five who rule Om and has dwelt in Athkatla for decades now, using the Ophal family wealth and influence to assemble, largely by means of hired adventurers, a large and ever-growing collection of magic items that it is experimenting with ways of linking with spell webs, so controlling one item can allow a wielder to, through it, wield two or three other magic items from afar. Irva Ramble, who is a, in beholder form, is green of hue thanks to a symbiotic mold growing on its body, yellow-eyed and customarily sneering, was able to do this because of its earlier mastery of shape-shifting magics and its achievement of magically linking its personal eye, eye stock powers to enchanted gems set in rings. So its eye beams lance out of gems set into those rings, most of which are worn by Irva Rambrel in his human chamberlain form, but a few of which are worn by other household servants of the Ophals. Purely so Irva Rambulo can bring about situations where a formidable foe can be surrounded by ring wearers ere hostilities erupt. Irva Rambrel intends to bring other members of the Council of Five under its influence in time to come and use the spellweb-linked magic items to protect them with a formidable bodyguard so as to keep them in power as it uses Om and the vast wealth of Om in particular to preserve grander magical projects like linking beholders to sentient undead and other long or eternal lifespan beings and so cheat its own aging. But it's in no particular hurry. It's having too much fun observing human strivings and intrigues unfolding all around it in an endless pageant. Number 1. Zokrel. A restless, far-traveled beholder 
whose spherical body is chestnut brown and as tall as a grand door, Zokrel long ago developed eye beam powers for itself, no other beholder is known to be able to do this, that allow it to magically compel dragons by affecting their blood. I'm simplifying the effects here, but think of at least three eye stalks of a be beholder unleashing a charm dragon spell with a DC 29 save that's effective only against the blood of chromatic dragons. And so far, Zokrel has tried and succeeded at commanding red, white, and black worms no other sorts. The dragons who've been commanded are helplessly enthralled for a variable depending on their own age and mental strength, but usually a matter of hours or most of a day after being caught in Zokrel's beam, but thereafter clearly remember everything and are typically enraged. So, many dragons are now actively hunting Zokrel, who compels dragons to get them to ravage settlements that have defied its demands to spread word of it and fear so others will obey. Zokrel exults at being worshipped and served out of terror but typically wants the largely human populaces it terrorizes to capture and torture all wizards and known owners of magic items to get them to yield all information they have about magic they possess or have hidden elsewhere, spellbooks and spell scrolls in particular, to add to Zokrel's ever-growing library. It intends to become so mighty in magic that all beings will fear it and obey it if it gives them orders, and to craft and perfect spells that will allow it to mentally possess dragons at will. So, if its own body ever becomes too old and frail or too damaged to spawn new beholders, or if it's in a situation where it judges a newly spawned beholder body will be too weak, it can take over a dragon's form, yet somehow retain the use of its eye magics. It hasn't yet perfected any means of doing this, but is trying hard. Welcome back, my friends, to Realm Speak, that little segment where we stumble over names, words, and phrases in the realms, and this week we're going to tackle this! Irinies a name from mythology that a lot of people stumble over. These are particularly devilish l ladies with nasty daggers and wings. This is an Arinyes. It's an Arinyes coming through the window at you. It's an Arinyes that is going to come up to you and put her dagger into you. So it's an Arinyes. Watch those sharp points. As it fights, Myrtle Glaskler often demands of its foes do you know Zalavrant? Where is Zalavrant? Elminster was able to enlighten me that Zalavrant is an immortal beholder of Semphar, whom increasing numbers of beholders have heard of and seek because Zalavrant seems to have...